Hey guys, STO Youngblood with you, and I wanted to take you through something real quick, and that's going to be the uh, test server. I know I've talked about this once before, um, but it's been a while since I've actually brought it up. Uh, and in addition to that, um, I, whenever I hop on the server, I never see anybody here. Uh, now, one of the reasons that you should be checking out the test server is it gives you an idea of things that are actually coming. Um, you know, so you can see changes that are happening and all that good stuff. Um, another reason is when the servers go down for maintenance, this is typically still up and operational. So this is kind of your opportunity to jump in um, and still get some game time in even when the other servers are down. So... Uh, there's going to be a link in the descriptions for you to actually uh, go and download this. Um, but what I'm showing you right now is take a look at the inside of these new towers and how walled off they are. Um, you know, there's already been some changes specifically around the guns uh, and a little bit to the layout in the main servers. Uh, but here in the test servers, I mean, look at this. I mean, it feels like you're on a vault. So I'm not really sure how I feel about this yet. I know it's designed to make it so um, you know, it, vehicles are less effective against indoor fighting. And you can see that you can't really spam in anywhere unless you just happen to be in one of those really unfortunate places within the structure. So part of me says this is kind of a smart idea because some people want that infantry gameplay. Um, however, the unforeseen consequence of this, or maybe it's foreseen and they just don't care, is everybody's going to be funneled together um, so tightly, especially when you get up here. I mean, look at these kill corridors. You can't really jump jet over railings. You're going to be really confined to these tight little spaces. And I can't help but think that it's going to just be this cramped kill zone that it's impossible to take. It's really frustrating to get out. Um, and once people actually get into the, uh, once people actually get inside these towers, I think it might actually make gameplay a little bit worse. So I like the changes that they've made to this point, specifically around the turrets, giving the people repairing and uh, getting into guns a little bit more cover. I think that was the right move for balance. I personally don't like the aesthetics of how walled off these are here. Um, or what I think it's going to actually do to gameplay. So, we'll see. I mean, not everything in the test server is actually implemented, so we'll just have to kind of see how it plays out and whether it's something that actually comes to fruition or not. Um, but it was interesting to see, and it, I didn't even know that those were in here like this. So when I actually started playing, I was like, whoa, what is this all about? So I figured I'd go ahead and share that with you. Um, the next thing that I am going to show you is something that I, as a pilot, uh, am not crazy about. And you may have heard about this before. Um, it, it, Planetside forums and Reddit are going to be two of your best places to actually get some of this information um, ahead of time. But check this out. I'm just going to be quiet for a sec. There it is. How do you feel about base shields? All right, so I knew these were something that were coming, and I heard somebody say that these were actually in the test server. So this morning, I was actually kind of excited to see that the um, I was actually kind of excited to see that the main servers were down because it gave me a reason to come over here and check this out again. Um, I was excited to come check these out. I'm not excited about base shields, but as you can see, it's a hard shield that covers a lot of the areas where infantry battles take place where the uh, enemy spawns um, and where they're actually running in. Now, obviously, this is going to be helpful if you're, a, you know, a friendly, um, but, you know, vehicles can still get in there. So there's really two purposes to this. One, to protect the ground troops from air, whether that's rocket pods or Daltons or Zephyrs or Shredders or whatever it is. You're getting a hard cover over your head, so it's going to be harder for you to actually be killed by air, unless you're zooming through the trees and getting down low like this, in which case you're just flat out rocket fodder. The other thing with it is, it seems like it's dr preventing drops uh, from galaxies and drop pods from landing within those innards. Now, you'll see later, I can actually land on top of this without taking damage. So I'm pretty sure drop pods will be able to hit this and then be able to run off to the edges. Um, it's almost more like a like a dome shield from the uh, uh, bio labs. So I, it's really going to prevent some of those real tactical insertion drops um and it'll be interesting to see what kind of dynamic that actually ends up uh, having on this so uh this is just kind of what it was now when i was sitting here doing this i was thinking to myself all right well i haven't researched this a ton so let's play around with it a little bit i want to see can you take these down is there a different generator or a different objective how can i actually make this so i can get in uh and remove these um, this is just kind of a funny moment where a Vanu kind of sneaks up on me while I was capping this base so I could get over there because I needed to connect the lattice. Um, I wasn't even paying attention. I look back at the screen and I see him right in front of me um, right about now. So I hit the 
boost and boom, I ran, <laughs> I ran his poor ass over. I felt kind of bad. So, uh, well, I guess I didn't feel that bad because I went back and killed his flash afterwards too. So, back to my story. So, I'm, I'm sitting here in this base and I'm saying to myself, well, let's see if we can get these uh, shields down, if there's some way to remove it. Well, t so I come over. I hit the shield generator, um, I charged it up, and then that guy that killed me came back and uh, we kind of exchanged fire for a little bit. Uh, but, generator eventually explodes, we decide to work together, I tell him I'm testing it out and he decides to help me out, so we're just kind of running around, this unlikely alliance of a Vanu player and a new conglomerate, one of like four people on this test server. Um, he's not in that side, by the way. So anyways, you can see, the uh, shield generator, both shield generators are down. But if you look up, the shields are still there. So, uh, well, all right, now what's plan B? What else could possibly take these shields down? Well, I thought come to mind that they still have control of the base, so I run up to the A point. And you're about to see that here in just a second. Um, playing around with my Vanu friend, we go up there and we capture the A point. Now, after we capture the A point, um, nothing happens. We go outside, we look at the sky, and guess what? It's still there. The shield is still waiting for us. It's not, nothing's happening. So at this point, I'm starting to get kind of frustrated, and I say, well, all right, what else could we possibly do? Well, after we hold the base for a certain amount of time, I say to myself, well, plan B. Let's go try and take down the SCU. Okay, we go to the SCU. We take down the SCU. Look up in the sky, and those shields are still there. So what does this actually mean? Um, basically what this means is that these shields are permanent fixtures that you're not going to be able to take down. It's going to really kind of follow the same mechanics of like a biodome shield, which kind of is that same correlation I mentioned earlier. Now with that, it's going to have to be something that we actually get used to. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not really a fan of this. I don't like separating the air and ground and armor, um, gameplay. This just kind of seems like it's forcing air out of the equation at these bases. Now, I know nobody likes getting farmed by air. It's not fun for anybody. But at the same time, that's one of the things that makes this game so interesting and dynamic is the ability to have engagements from so many different avenues, whether that's in an air vehicle or a ground vehicle, or maybe you're going anti-vehicle roles. Whatever it may be, there's those different things that you can do in this game, and that's part of what makes this all so interesting and unique. So... I'm not really a fan of this. I hope it's something that doesn't get implemented. I can tell you, I fight in these bases a lot, and it's pretty rare that I'm actually killed by the air. What am I normally killed by? Harassers, lightnings, prowlers, mag riders, etc. Infantry. Well, th these shields aren't going to really do anything to help you against those main t threats. So I, I'm not real sure what the logic is here. I'm hoping that SOE will kind of give us some reasoning as to what their plans are with this. I can't see anything, any real reason or purpose for them, um, but I would love to hear something if there was. So um, what you're seeing on the screen now, um, that TR guy, he said he was going to play along and help us out, and then he ended up killing my Vanu buddy and killed me uh, and laughed and tra la 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 So I get a little bit of revenge on him. Um, so hopefully I'll just let this play out. You guys can watch the rest of it. There's not a whole lot more. Um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. I'll see if I can dig up some more research, and I'm going to play on the test servers a little bit more. So hopefully I get a little bit more information. Um, so yeah, just uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm personally not a fan, but if you are, let me know why. So that's it for now. Young Blood out, and I'll catch you guys later.